In this lesson, we're going to start looking at the brush tool. The brush tool is located here, and its keyboard shortcut is the letter B. Now, the brush tool works just like the pencil tool. We click and drag. Except, instead of creating strokes or lines, the brush tool creates shapes with a fill color. And we set the fill color here or down here in the properties inspector. Now, the brush tool has quite a few modifiers, so we're going to split this into two lessons. We're going to start down here in the properties inspector with the smoothing setting. And this works exactly the same as the smoothing setting in the pencil tool. We can specify to flash how much we want it to help us out by smoothing our paintbrush strokes. Okay, over here to the options area, we start with the object drawing mode. We've seen that before, so we'll move on to the next one. This is a new one. It's called the lock fill modifier. The lock fill modifier works on gradients and bitmap fills. So, for this lesson, we're going to turn on the color mixer panel. Choose window and color mixer here. Using the color mixer panel, we can specify the type of fill. And that's here. And the bottom three are the ones that the lock fill modifier applies to. Let's change this to linear. Now, without lock fill turned on, I can click and drag. And in this case, a linear fill is extended across the length of my shape that I've just drawn. Now, what happens if I draw shorter shapes? Well, each one contains its own gradient. And the gradient in each shape extends from one end of it to the other. Now, I'll just draw another long one and then turn the lock fill modifier on. Now drawing a number of short shapes again, we can see that the appearance is different. This is because the lock fill modifier locks the fill to the last shape you drew before you turned it on. And the last shape I drew was this big long shape here. So it doesn't matter what I draw from this point onward, the fill is always going to correspond to the fill in this shape. And this can be very useful. Let me undo this. Turn the lock fill off and draw a small shape. Now we'll turn it on and draw a long one. The fill again is constrained to the area of the last shape I drew. And the same thing works with radial gradients and bitmap fills. Now notice when you select bitmap, you may not have any bitmaps here. If you don't, hit the import button and you can grab a bitmap here. Okay, I'll get rid of all this artwork and we'll move on in the options. The next one is the brush mode and we're going to cover that in the next lesson. So we'll move on to the brush size and brush shape. Brush size is very self-explanatory. It controls the size of your paintbrush. And let's turn this back to a more normal fill. Turn it up, bigger paintbrush. Pretty easy. The brush shape, though, is very cool. As you can see, we have a large selection. And using this, we can create calligraphy. Now, if you're lucky enough to own a pressure-sensitive graphics tablet, such as a Wacom, this is where you can have some fun. Because you can set the modifiers to vary the width of your brush strokes by varying the pressure on your pen or stylus. And you can also set the tilt modifier to vary the angle of your brush strokes according to the angle of the pen in your hand or the stylus in your hand and that can be a lot of fun now let's finish up this lesson with a brief note about smoothing remember the smoothing modifier down here and this applies to the pencil tool as well every time we create artwork using these tools the pencil and the brush tools 
Flash creates anchor points and tangent handles to describe them, just like we saw when we looked at the pen tool. We don't see them when we use these tools, as you can see here, but they're still there. To view them after you've drawn something, grab the subselection tool and select your shape. There they are. Now each of these anchor points adds not only to the file size of your exported Flash movies, but they also require more processing power to reproduce on the viewer's computer. This is even more important when you're planning on animating your drawn artwork. The more calculations the Flash player has to make, the more processing power that's needed. And as you can see here, this looks like a very simple shape, but it contains a very large number of anchor points. If we turn smoothing on, the number of anchor points produced is quite a bit less. Now, in most cases, this won't be a big issue. Computers and internet connections these days tend to be fairly good. But, as always, it's a good idea to keep things like this in mind when you're considering your target audience. I just keep a general attitude that less is better. If you can get away with keeping it simple, you won't go wrong. We'll cover this in more depth later on, but keep in mind that you can also smooth and optimize your artwork after you create it. Select your artwork and choose Modify, Shape, Smooth, Straighten, or Optimize. This will help you keep the number of anchor points in your artwork under control. And that's it for this first lesson on the brush tool.